guy who loves basketball, Kurt Heelan, uh, NBCSports.com. Good enough to join us for a couple of minutes here as the Pels. Three games to go, making that push. Kurt, we appreciate the time, man. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It's uh, it's absolutely my pleasure. A big picture question first. Uh, the New Orleans Pelicans with three games to go. What's your thought on this team? In a West where after Denver it feels a little wide open and different teams come you know in and out of vogue for a while, you know get hot and, and gets everybody's attention. It feels like this is a a good year for them to make a run. You know if they out of that you know let's say six seed you can you can. You're not on the Denver side of the bracket, probably, hopefully, and then you can make a run and win around, maybe two with a little luck if if the matchups are there and Ingram can get healthy. So I, it, everything just feels more wide open than it has for a while. Uh, frankly, in both conferences, it's just there's a juggernaut at the top. How, so, how big is the gap? It's interesting you say that because I mean, obviously, we've even seen Denver not stick and stay in the one seat in the West right now. But but how? How much of a gap is there with Denver and it's Minnesota, OKC, okay, who are everybody else in the West? I don't think it's as big as it's been, or, or, or frankly, as big as it is like in the East with Boston, who's not just 14 games up, but like everybody else is busy shooting themselves in the foot. Denver isn't as deep as they were last year. They're going to miss uh, Brown, you know, Bobby Brown. They're going to miss um, just some of the depth that was there. But at the end of the day, they're proven. Like, they can go to a two-man game with Murray and Jokic, and there's just not an answer. Nobody has quite figured it out. Um, and that puts them up there. I, I think there's a little gap. I have, I have right now, I think Dallas is probably the second-best team because Luka Doncic is, is a great clutch playoff player. If your second-best player is Kyrie Irving on the, on the court, that is, you know, yeah. he's, been, he's been, he's so smooth. And they've been playing really good defense uh, since the All Star break, and they went and got another big in Gafford. So they look like a threat. But I, you know, there was stretches. There's, mo- I think that's where I am with the Pelicans, right? And you guys, do you get this sense down there? There's times you watch them, you're like, that team, that yes. team's really good. That team's really dangerous, but it's not consistent. So th- that's actually a great segue when you were talking about teams in the East shooting themselves in the foot. That was my thought when the Pels have a six-game homestand. They go one and five, and they lose to San Antonio, yeah. and they lose to Orlando. So when you see this team, and you see that a team that, quite honestly, Kurt has been better on the road than they've been at home. Which Pelicans team is it? The one where you go, oh, that, or the one where you go, man, they lost five or six on a homestand when they were pushing to not only to avoid the play-in but potentially to, to be the four seed and get home court in a first-round yeah. series. Yeah, and it's frustrating because they're acting sort of like a young team, except you know with CJ and and frankly uh, Ingram and stuff, they're not really that young. But they're acting like a young team that tends to be like they did it last night, right? They woke up and beat Portland, but that first half, man, yeah, that, that started that game. They, they're like, we don't take. They just don't seem to take some stuff seriously. And I think the advantage in the playoffs is they will come and take it seriously. They will be focused. You're not. You're not. You're not looking past anybody in the playoffs. Uh, the problem is you, you get the exact same thing from the other team. Nobody's on the second night of a back-to-back. Nobody, you know, nobody, nobody's been out all night in New Orleans. Although, you know, if you can swing that, that's good. <laughs> the uh, uh, Kurt uh, Kurt Heelan is with us. He's on Twitter at Basketball Talk. You'll give him a follow. By the way, how did you must have had that handle like the day Twitter launched? Basketball Talk. <laughs> how long have you had this handle, man? Uh, I got it when I when I. When we first started, um, and I got hired by NBC, but that was 2010. So it yeah. wasn't exactly new, but there were there were a lot fewer people and a lot less bots on it then. So, suffice to say, like I didn't launch my Twitter until 2012, and I've been on radio a long time. So yeah, man, to get at Basketball Talk, you're an OG. Yeah. Uh, props, respect to you. Um, if let, let me let me look at the next three for New Orleans, because I think the next most obvious question is how does this shake out, like. Some of the analytics say that the Pels have a seventy-three. I saw the Pels have a seventy-three percent chance of landing as the six seed. So you got three to play. They're at Sacramento, at Golden State, then home against the Lakers. What do you see playing out over those three? Sacramento is one of those teams shooting themselves in the foot lately. They haven't been playing well. Uh, they're not an easy team to beat. I mean, Demontis Sabonis. Demontis Sabonis will get a double double. I'll just tell you now. Like it's going to happen. Mm. He's got what. 50, 60 in a row, 50-something, 60 in a row now. Um, Fox is good, but they're not deep. They're not consistent. They really, 
really miss Malik Monk, who might be the sixth man of the year. And without his depth, they're, they're kind of lost. Um, I just saw the Warriors in person last night against the Lakers, and they're playing really well. Um, they have found their groove. That's, that might be the toughest one of the ones left. They, they have figured out who they are and what they want to be, and they've got something to play for right now uh, as they try to climb out of the – they would like to not play the Lakers in a 9-10 mm. situation. So they're, they're hoping Sacramento keeps stumbling and they can get past them. And then that last game against the Lakers is interesting. They're big, they're physical, but you never know on that last day of the season, right? If, what does anybody, we'll see what people have to play for. And in the Lakers case, they would love to rest guys, especially going into the play. And I just don't, you know, we'll see where they, where they are at that point, or if they're going to, there's a, there's a 50% chance that I hope you didn't buy your tickets to see LeBron and AD, but you know, I mean, <laughs> um, I, people here are going to boo AD even if he's in street clothes. It's just the that's way that true. it's yes. just the way that's going to go. Um, so it, that's really interesting. So what you're saying is, if if you get to the final day of the regular season, and the Lakers are locked into that nine ten matchup, if they're nine or ten, it doesn't matter. They're obviously not going to yeah. fall. I mean, everybody's been has everyone else been eliminated. So if they're locked into that nine ten, they rest LeBron and AD. Probably, um, especially those guys right now. They're both. I mean, Anthony Davis didn't play last night because he's a little banged up. LeBron has been battling an ankle thing and a leg thing for the second half of this season. Plus, I mean, you have to remember, he has played more minutes than anybody. He started playing in the NBA. I think, I think it was during the Harding administration. Like, he's, he's been in the league forever. And so they're trying to get him rest down the stretch when they can. It was President Bush's first term. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was Bush's first term whenever he started in the NBA. Um, a couple more for you. Uh, Kurt Heelan's our guest, NBCSports.com. He was on Twitter at Basketball Talk again. I'm at Basketball. I mean, I'm, how did you not just get Basketball? I mean, that would have been something, too. You could have gotten that handle maybe back, back I, I was trying to, because at the time we were, uh, NBC was doing the pro, the, you know, like pro football talk, pro basketball talk. We were all going for that, but then I just kind of kept it. That's so good. <laughs> um, okay, if, if it does stay as is, as is projected, it looks like New Orleans would end up playing right. OKC. That's yep. a team that they've not had great success against. If that is the matchup we see in the first round, how much confidence should I have that the Pels could advance? That's a tough matchup because, um, A, they've got a, obviously an elite player in, in Shea Gildas-Alexander. Um, the other thing that you have to like about them is for a young team, a genuinely young team, they're boys. They are very good in the clutch. They don't lose themselves much. The other flip side of that is their guys just have never been to the playoffs. I mean, as a team, they just really haven't been there. They're still trying to figure stuff out. And the other part of it is, and this is where I think with the right matchups and, and a chance for Zion to really shine, you can be physical with them. You can push them around. They are not a – obviously, Chet's kind of obviously a little bit – Thin, but they're just not a big team. They have struggled against Minnesota and the Lakers and the really big teams. And I think if you can be physical with them, it gives them trouble. Before you go, I would love a thought. Again, this is just a big picture one. I would love a thought on 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 Willie Green and the job he's done. I think he's done a great job of of m melding this thing together. It says, you know, look, Zion and Ingram are not a puzzle piece fit, right? Like it's not, it's not just been natural and easy and simple. And, and he had to do some work there. Uh, CJ certainly helped, but the locker, the locker room stuff is part of it, but part of it's just the X's and O's and getting guys in the right spot. And he has a really good feel for these guys and what works and what doesn't. It's, it's been, yeah, I'd say, I don't think he's going to end up on a coach of the year ballot because that always kind of goes to guys who exceeded expectations. And I'm not sure that's, completely what happened with the Pelicans, but his job getting them there is, is impressive. And I know, I know there's been moments of frustration with him in, in New Orleans, but I think overall he's done a really good job. Kurt, this is fun, man. Uh, appreciate a couple minutes. Hopefully we do it again maybe as we get closer to the playoffs. I look forward to it, man. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.